What's up guys, Tommy Mutchler here, your lazy agent. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up your Chime CRM to automate your follow-up, your real estate business, and get free real estate leads. Let's jump right into the video. All right, first up, before we dive in deep, let's do a quick walkthrough of the Chime CRM. First up here, we got our People's tab. Now this is where we're going to sort and organize and categorize all of our leads. We have our lead pipeline system right here. This is a really cool tool, it's really underrated. Basically the way it works is leads have to live somewhere in this pipeline, and the goal is to move them down this pipeline from let's say new leads, to nurtured, to setting an appointment, to under contract, to close. The goal is to move them down the pipeline to close. Hopefully you don't go to the, the, the do not contact. That's something you definitely wanna avoid. But this pipeline tool is really, really cool and really helpful to understand and categorize your leads. The thing is though, leads can only live in one spot. They can't live in two places in the pipeline. They can only live in one place at a time. So it's a great way to kind of categorize, organize your leads, seal your hot leads, seal your warm leads, seal your cold leads. Now Chime sets this up in a completely different way. I've gone ahead and set mine up this way. You're more than happy, welcome to copy and paste it. Uh, I actually have a, like a whole free mini course explaining why I do it this way and how I automate my entire CRM to basically never like follow up again. I basically just automated my entire real estate business. That, there's a link for that down below if you want to check it out. But basically this is how I set it up and you can edit that right here under this gear icon. Uh, you can edit them however you want with the exception of the closed and the new lead. You can't edit those. Obviously you have to close leads and you got a new leads. This is really important for further automation too. So really make sure you are careful when you set this up in the way you want to. Of course, then we have groups, which are kind of like buckets. So a lead can live in like multiple groups or buckets all at once. And of course you have all of your filters. Now, if we're gonna click on a lead, now here we are on our client contact page. This is our client profile page. It's basically everything we need to know about the lead. On here on the left side, we can call the lead, text the lead, email the lead. Of course, you could choose like multiple different phone numbers. So if the lead has different phone numbers, you can text them, choose who you want to text. You can send video text, photos, you have your templates. You can do like automated templates and things like that. You have all the lead personal information, birthdays, everything. You have like these dynamic lead scores. So you could see, so your CRM uses like this dynamic logic to score or the lead. Of course, if you want to dive into analytics, you definitely, definitely can do that. Go more in depth and see what's going on with the lead, see their website activity, their communications, see their email open rate, their text reply rate. Of course, too, you can also like assign different users, like assign the AI, turn the AI on, assign different realtors and things like that. Up here, we have our timeline where you can see all of our communications, all of our notes, anything like that. And a really helpful tool I like to do is I like to pin notes up here so you can pin your notes up top. So even if they're down here more, you could see where they are. Uh, you can see like your video texts, your video emails that you send out. Then up here under engagement, we have all of our smart plans. Now you can send out listing alerts, property alerts, market reports, market snapshots, home reports, seller reports, and basically a ton of different types of automations. Um, these are all different things. Seller reports are like you're selling your home. Here's the marketing we've done. Uh, home reports are here's the value of your home. Market reports are the market reports of the entire housing market. Snapshots, these are basically like neighborhood reports like, hey, your neighbor's house just sold, yada, yada. And then of course you have property alerts, really cool stuff. Smart plans, we're gonna dive really deep into this. Basically smart plans is how you automate everything. It's the follow-up campaigns. They send out sequential text messages, emails. They can turn on, off, turn on and off AIs, do different Zapier tasks, send out ringless voicemails. They can send out postcards. That's right, Chime can send out postcards. A ton of really awesome stuff. We'll dive really deep into this. And then of course you have transaction history. And of course you have transactions where you can manage the entire transactions for those leads. Uh, it's full transaction management software. Uh, you can have like these checklists, you have all your accounting information, you can assign different contacts, upload your documents for document storage. You even have offer links where you can create custom links for other realtors to submit offers to you. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Now moving on to our calendar, this is basically where you see and manage all your tasks. First up, we have this calendar view here. We can also move to our task view list here where we can see all of our tasks for today. Let's click on our tasks that are due this month. Um, of course, you can sort and organize them however you want. Uh, you could just go through it and complete all of them. And of course we have our calendar view. Now the calendar view is really, really cool. Now you can leave it on weeks, days, months, whatever you want. I kind of like to leave it on weeks sometimes just so I could see my appointments for the week, things like that. Um, but some really cool stuff about this calendar is you have this calendar link where people can like actually schedule appointments with you. It's kind of like Calendly if you've ever used that. Um, it's this really cool calendar link. And um, 
This is actually a really important tool if you use the uh, AI. So Chime CRM has an AI built into it and the AI is going to try and schedule appointments for you and it's going to reference this calendar on your behalf. And of course, it's gonna integrate with like your calendar from like Google or Outlook, uh, even Calendly, if you use Calendly, I use Calendly for scheduling a lot of meetings and appointments. Really cool stuff. You can integrate like Zoom links. So like here's like your calendar schedule where you can like set all your working hours, times you're available, things like that. You can also integrate like Google Meets or like Zoom meeting links so people can schedule appointments with you through Chime. Lots of really cool stuff. Then we also have listings. Now listings is a powerful, powerful tool. Now these are my current listings that I have right now and you can manage basically the entire listings. Lots of really cool stuff. You can run uh, promotional ads if you want. Uh, um, and this integrates with your MLS, of course. So like I ran these ads, I spent $200, I got, you know, 3,400 impressions, I got 13 leads. Uh, actually, no, I got 105 clicks, I got 13 leads. Um, my cost per lead is 15 bucks, it's a little expensive. It's actually usually closer to like six or $8, so I don't know why it was so expensive. Um, but lots of cool stuff. Um, and this can be shared with your, with your lead as like a full report. It's actually really cool stuff. Social Studios, this is a program that lets you auto post to your social media. We'll, we'll jump into that in a bit. Really cool tool that will auto post all your listings and like the listing stages. You have promotional pages, like different listing pages. So these are like pages that I have personally created inside of Chime or Chime will automatically create separate listing pages. Of course, I've included like a video tour if you wanna watch that or do like video tours. Um, you have you get 3D tours, you've got a gallery, some information. And then of course, in about five seconds, 20 seconds, I don't know, pretty soon it's gonna trigger a pop-up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off though because we got stuff to talk about. Um, you can do open house forms, really cool open house forms. If you've ever seen those, check it out. Uh, of course, they can just scan in and autofill everything with their phone or they can sign in with on the computer and just sign in and register for the open house. Uh, text codes, of course, another great tool. And this all syncs with these listings too. So again, your your sellers can get full reports, whether daily, weekly, every few days, whatever you want on all of your marketing efforts. Of course, as well as your website activity, uh, engage leads, potential leads. Over here, I can see all my potential uh, buyers right here. Uh, really, really cool stuff. And then of course you have your full on like MLS integrated tool. You can create your own hot sheets, but basically you could see all the listings on the market and there's some really, really cool stuff here. So if I were to just type in my area and you have all the same search features that you have anywhere, uh, you're gonna notice right here, I have something called match leads. So if I have a listing or if I see a listing that let's just say, hey, all 47 people match this listing, I can click this and I could see all 45 of these people. And if I wanted to, I could refine and like uh, filter these down a little bit more. Maybe I just wanna follow up with all like, uh, all my leads that are not active or set an appointment or under contract. Maybe I don't wanna send out a text to those, but then what I could do is I can select all of them and then I can click an auto text and I could fill this out however I want. I could change the language on this and I could hit send and it's going to text all these people like, hey, check out this brand new house that just came on the market. I think you'd really like it. So lots of really cool stuff right there. Moving on to our campaigns tool. Now this is basically our entire marketing center inside of Chime. Now this is where we're gonna access our smart plans. Smart plans are basically the bread and butter of the Chime Seagram and it's gonna be how you automate everything, like literally everything. You're gonna do all of your automation inside of Chime and you're gonna use the smart plans to do it. Now, just to show you an example, if I click new smart plan, you got a couple different triggers. Now, most of the time you're gonna use the standard plan. This is gonna be your standard follow-up plan. Uh, of course, you can do ones that trigger on like certain activities, like they trigger on New Year's Day, maybe they trigger it on like the close date or a birth date or some sort of custom field. We're gonna go ahead and make a smart plan right now. We're gonna name it something and we're gonna say uh, new open house leads, okay? We got new open house leads and we're going to target them and we're going to assume that they are buyer leads and we're gonna have this auto apply when a lead is newly created. So this is when a lead is created, uh, the CRM is going to recognize that, hey, the lead was created, let's go ahead and trigger this smart plan and I'm gonna look for the lead source open house so when an open house lead is created, it is going to turn on automatically. Now you can further refine this however you want. Let's say they have a certain tag. 
they're looking to buy within a certain time frame, like one to three months, six to 12 months. If you want, you can organize leads based off being in a certain pipeline stage. So only leads that are that are the new warm pipeline stage or the appointment set stage or new leads. And I use this a lot too for for more advanced automation. I really use this. Make sure though, if it's um, not a new lead, you click whenever a lead meets a specific criteria. So if it's not a new lead, you're gonna want to use this. This is going to apply to all open house leads when they are not newly created, okay? So if it's a new lead that's newly created, you wanna click this guy right here. If they are not newly created, you want to make sure you click whenever meets that specific condition and you can do whatever you want. Let's just say I wanna follow up with every uh, open house lead that is in the hot pipeline. So if it's an open house lead in the hot pipeline, I want to follow up with uh, with this campaign. Now we're gonna go ahead and just go back to when a, new, when a lead is newly created for the sake of this video. You have a few other things you can do here that are really cool, last touch. So if they haven't been in contact within like the, like let's just say you haven't talked to them in like two weeks, you can have a new campaign trigger if you haven't talked to them in a while. That lead score, remember that dynamic lead score. So if they have like a really high lead score, you might want to follow up with them. And if they have a really low score, you might want to send a, a different message. Like you can really modify it and customize how these smart plans trigger and start. So we'll go ahead and click save. We'll click auto apply. And I want the, the smart plan to pause when the lead reaches out, okay? And I want to create an action. You can do whatever you want. You can move to a different pipeline. Let's just say when they when they respond or reach out, I want to put them in the hot pipeline. Uh, or you can add a tag, or you could add them to a group, or you can just do nothing. You don't have to do anything at all. Now, first thing first is we have our automation right here. So let's send out a welcome email. Hey, welcome. Uh, and then you could add some dynamic content. Whoops, let's just back up for a second. Welcome, and then I wanna add their first name, so I'm gonna hit variable right here, and I'm just gonna say welcome first name, so it'd be like welcome John. Now, right here in the email, I might wanna say hi, again, let's add their first name. Now, of course, you might wanna write these differently, do whatever you want, this is just what I do. If you wanna include like bomb bomb videos, dub videos, YouTube videos, you can insert custom listings, you have your basic email editor here, then you can do whatever you want. You could do custom HTML if you really wanna do that as well. And then of course you have templates. If you have templates already made, you can definitely add those things. Really, really cool stuff. And of course, make sure you add your email signature at the end of these. So you go to variable, go to agent variables, and then click on, we wanna to go to my signature. Now for our delay, we might wanna add an auto delay. We might wanna say, hey, we don't want this to go out the second they come to the, e to the open house. We might wanna wait, let's say two hours. I want it to go out two hours and 10 minutes is fine. Two hours and 10 minutes after the lead comes in or open house, we want this smart plan to trigger and follow up with them. After we send them that text, we might want to send them, or sorry, after we send them that email, we might want to send them a text message as well. So you have your auto emails, you have your auto text, you have email and you have text. Now these are manual tasks. This means you have to manually text or email or call the lead. Uh, right now, I like to use auto email and auto text a lot of times. Of course, you have automated postcards, you have automated letters, you have a Zapier integration, which if you know how to use Zapier, really, really powerful tool. Uh, if you don't know how to use Zapier, there's a ton of great YouTube videos on it. You can change the pipeline. So if you wanted to after a while, let's just say you follow up with them for a few, for a couple weeks and they never respond, they never reach out you might wanna put them in the cold pipeline, okay? Because there might be a cold lead. You haven't talked to them in a while. So that might be something you wanna do. You could turn the AI on. So if you want to, like you can say, hey, I want to turn the AI on and have the AI start suggesting leads or start suggesting listings to all those leads. You can change the group. You can uh, add smart tags. Uh, you could turn on smart plans, buyer property alerts. Like you can actually turn on a buyer property alert. Like check this out if you wanted to. You can say, hey, anyone that came to my open house, I wanna set them up on a property alerts that is similar. So I wanna set them up on listings in Bellingham that are, let's say, in a certain price range, you know, 400 to, I don't know, let's go something crazy, 800. That's probably not realistic. You probably wouldn't wanna do that. Property type, let's go to, turn off multifamily commercial, let's go to single family and I don't know, condos, right? Uh, anything that's above four beds, and, and you got a ton more settings here. And then of course you could set the frequency. I want these, I want to use the market supplements and I want them to go out, let's just say uh, 
Wednesday night. Okay, and of course you can do daily, instantly, whatever you want. I wouldn't do, if you're setting up a listing alert this way, I wouldn't have it go out more than once a week. Um, any other listing alerts for any leads you're actively working with, I would just ask them if they wanna get them daily or just a couple of times a week. I usually assume it's two days a week for most people, unless I'm adding a cold listing alert like this to a lead, uh, then I'll do it once a day. Go ahead and click save, and now they're gonna get a listing alert. Uh, again, um, you could do slide broadcasts, which are ringless voicemails. You could do uh, other tasks, uh, checklists, or you could start another smart plan. Let's just say this smart plan's over. Let's do a couple of things. Let's uh, let's say the smart plan's over. We're gonna change the pipeline. Oh, and we wanna wait. Let's just say, oh, oh, for changing pipelines and property loads, you can't wait. You gotta do it like right after the last task, just so you are aware, kind of annoying thing. Whereas obviously if you were to add like a text message right after, you can set it up for whenever you want, like a couple days later, three days later, six days later, pick the date, the time, um, include like images, variable content, uh, videos, literally anything you want. Um, but let's just say right after this, this whole campaign ends, uh, I wanna put them in the nurture pipeline. And then I want to start a, let's say, I want to start another smart plan that I'm gonna call, I made this smart plan, and you can get a copy of this down below if you get if you sign up for my course. Um, you get copies of all these. Uh, attempting contact, and you get the whole open house um, smart plans. You get all my smart plans, all my templates, everything. But, um, so once this is over, uh, I would start this attempting contact to further nurture and further engage this lead. So I know that way I'm not creating new smart plans for every single lead source. Okay, so that's how we kind of use smart plans. Um, just like a quick, quick overview. Now here's some more advanced dynamic content I wanna talk about. Under here, under edit, when starting this, when it's starting this uh, campaign, we have the option to uh, trigger a smart plan based off the lead's certain behavior. So let's just say a, a lead look, requested a showing on a website, we could trigger a smart plan from that. Really cool stuff. Let's say they saved a listing on our website or they viewed a listing three times, you know, or they left a message. Let's just say, um, let's just say they, they, they saved a listing on our website and let's not worry about the lead source. I don't care. Let's just say all leads. Actually, I'll turn that off. Um, and I don't care about what pipeline in. It's just when anyone saves a listing, uh, I want to follow up with them, okay? It doesn't, nothing else really matters here. Actually, let's just say they're six to 12 months out. Let's just assume they save a listing and they're six to 12 months out. I want to follow up with them with this campaign and it, and it's going to trigger. So when they favorite a listing on my website, so they click the little heart button, that little icon, we're gonna delete all these tasks and all this stuff. Well, theoretically, you just start a new one so you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. We're gonna start out by sending a text saying, hey, Let's insert the first name. I don't want to tell them that I follow that I saw they saved a listing. I just want to follow up with them. And then I'm going to send another text message immediately after. So I'm changing it to, let's just wait one minute. You can do immediately after. I'm going to do one minute. And I'm going to say, how's it going? And you can really write whatever you want. So I want it to sound a little more personal. And actually, I don't want it to go out immediately. I want it to wait. Uh, I want it to wait. 10 minutes before it goes out. I don't want it to go up the second they uh, favorite that listing. That means might seem a little weird. Let's wait like 10 minutes before they go out. Actually, let's wait two minutes. Um, and then I only want to go up between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. I don't want it going out like four in the morning. Okay, that would just be weird. So we'll go out between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And then, you know what? We might, we might wait one more day and then we might um, send set up a uh, an auto email. And then I'll just say missed call or so actually what I want to do first is I want to do a ringless voicemail. So I'll do a ringless voicemail that goes out. We'll do the checking in one. And then right after the ringless voicemail goes out, we'll wait four minutes because ringless voicemails take a couple minutes to execute because they got to call the, the cell phone and then the cell phone takes a couple minutes to register. And we're going to do a missed call for the lead's name. So we typed in the lead's name and then Hey, again, make this whole campaign. You can make it as long as you want. Really, really cool, powerful stuff. You can go really, really in depth with this. Um, I'm actually gonna turn this off because I don't actually want to save this campaign. That's how you use smart plans, really powerful stuff. Um, you have the AI assistant, of course, if you want. 
Um, and then we also have property alerts. Let's go over the property alerts. I like to enable all the property alerts right away. So what I do is um, basically when a lead comes in, like and they acquire on a certain property on a house, I want to send a property alert um, within 24 hours. So after the lead registers, let's just say they come in through Zillow or realtor.com or on your website, I want to start automatically sending them listings that are similar to the house that they inquired on. So 24 hours after they come in, where they're gonna get a listing alert. It's gonna go on Tuesday and Friday morning. Uh, and Friday morning is kind of in case I wanna schedule an appointment on, on Friday for the weekend. Uh, the frequency is daily, obviously open house. I don't send out open houses, but you can. Uh, location, I do same as city. Um, if you have more, if you're like in a really big city like Seattle or Los Angeles, you might wanna focus on zip codes only. Uh, I do cities, but you can do whatever you want. Um, days listed, I do any, and I do properties. I do just active and back on markets. I don't do pendings, I don't do coming soon. We, we don't have coming soon here, they're illegal. Um, active under contract, don't do those. And then I exclude pipelines, uh, just do not contact. Realtors only, it's, that's for personal use. You probably won't have that pipeline. Um, but basically any, any lead that comes in, I'm going to um, add it to. And then I'm gonna click auto apply. So any lead that comes in is going to get these property alerts automatically. Now I'm gonna show you a really cool hack real quick. We're gonna come back to campaigns, but I'm gonna to go to settings really quick. And I want to show you under our email templates. So let's go to our automated emails and let's go to our property alerts. So right here we have our property alerts. I want you to add this text right here. Hi John, uh, or hi first name. This property just came on the market and, and it matches your search. Let me know if you want to see it or if you have any questions. Just adding this line of text has got me so many more appointments. Not like a crazy ton amount, but at least a couple more appointments a month um, from just email, just from this, at least two or three more appointments than I usually get. Now, my emails do get me a lot of appointments, but just adding this line, let me know if you want to see any or if you have any questions. And then I put it in bold. This has been a game changer. Now, Chime, the way it works is you have property alerts for single properties and then multiple properties. These are not multifamilies. This is just versus one house versus two or more houses come on the property. So I changed the wording for if it's two or more. Um, again, I had that dynamic contact. That's number of properties, like two new houses, 10 new houses, 10 new properties just came on the market. That matches search. Let me know if you want to see any, see any of them. But again, same thing. I just changed the wording to match um, the type of alerts that are going out. Definitely recommend doing that. All right, moving back onto our campaigns, we have our home reports. These are the home value reports, really cool tools. You can pull them up real quick. You can send these full detailed home value reports where it shows them even their mortgage information. So like they could see like, how much have you paid off? This is how much you paid to a principal. This is how much you paid in interest. Uh, this is how much money you left you owe still on your mortgage. You know, this is what your remaining balance is. Um, here's your options for like refinancing, what you can do. Uh, some really cool stuff here. And of course, this goes out in an email weekly. Really cool, really cool. Set that up. Of course, we have our lead generation. If you want to pay for lead generation, you have direct mail where you can send off one-off emails. Of course, you can do more. Of course, you can set up geographic farming if you want. If you want, you can also sign up for their seller lead program or their buyer lead program if you wanna buy real estate leads from them. I did do a lot of testing. I was getting about $8 per lead, eight, eight to $6 per lead source. On average, Google PPC was really, really expensive. Facebook was by far the cheapest. Those are like, two or three dollars a lead. Google PPC was like $40 a lead. I don't know, really expensive. I did not try out the market Microsoft leads there. They're new, I haven't had a chance to. Then of course we have our listing promotional tool. I kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. You can spend 200 bucks and then for the entire life cycle that that listing comes in the market. So when it's a new listing, they're gonna send out custom ads for it. When it's an old listing, they're gonna send out custom ads or not old listing. When it's pending or open house, it's gonna send out custom, um, um, advertisements on like Facebook and stuff for the life cycle. So you can see, hey, new listing, um, join us for an open house. Uh, the price the price just dropped, um, you know, different clothes. We just, we're under contract, like different type of alerts are gonna go out. Really, really cool stuff. A great way to get more leads and of course market your listings further. You have our CMA tool, if you like to do CMAs, you know, if you like to use the Chime CMA tool, uh, it's not bad. Uh, you have the design center, which is like Canva. I'm gonna be honest, not the best tool in the world. 
um, but you can use it to make custom designs. Canva's free. This is also free. It's in your Chime CRM. Uh, they do make some cool templates. Now, a lot of these templates will automatically change with like your personal information. You can see like, hey, there's me and my ugly face right there. Um, you can also auto import like your listings with your listing photos into here. So if you wanna quickly send out like a postcard of like any listings you've just made. Uh, video library, they got, they're experiment, experimenting with some uh, video stuff. And then they got your brand kit too, which is gonna be like part of some of your design thinner stuff where it's gonna autofill like your information, your logo, things like that. You can make custom web pages or landing pages for your website we'll get into the website tools here later but if you want to make custom landing pages for some lead generation you absolutely can uh, we're going to talk about some great ways to generate free real estate leads completely passively we'll talk about that here in a bit we have our social studios tool really cool tool highly recommend getting it set up we have this really awesome auto posting tool where it's going to automatically post my listings as they come on the market it's going to automatically post any price reduced, any open house, if they're back on the market, under contract, sold, just listed, anything. Now under social auto posts, uh, you can see you can customize your messaging. So my new listings, here's my custom messaging, my open house, uh, my price reduced, under contract, sold, back on market. I have all this custom um, listing information along with all this variable content that will auto fill for me on my behalf. Uh, and of course, you can connect it to a lot of different uh, systems. If you're on a team, you can turn this on for teams and post team listings. Uh, Chime's also going to create um, recommended posts. So like right now, Thanksgiving's in a couple days. Uh, Chime's recommending, hey, you should probably post a Thanksgiving one. Uh, you can also post like listings, uh, your listings, anything like that. If I were to click on this, and this is not my listing. This is from um, uh, my team. Um, if I wanted to, it's gonna pick a bunch of photos. It's gonna say, hey, look, this price, this market, this house just came on the market, check it out. Uh, I can replace this with a preview image. I could change all these photos if I want to. So there's all these photos, I can reselect different ones if I wanted to, Sit save. Uh, if I want, I can also say, hey, you know what? Even though this is not my listing, I'm gonna post all these other things as well. And I can also schedule it later down the road. You can also create just generic posts. So you can create your listing posts, your blog posts, running blogs that you have. Definitely recommend making blogs. Great way to generate a lot of free business. Now the trick is you have to make your own. Now you can pay someone to make them, but they have to be unique custom content. So you can't be uh, buying one of these like $10 a month blog services that make these generic um, blogs for you. They absolutely do not work. Do not do that. You can do a landing page. You can do custom pages. Uh, lots of really cool stuff with the social studio tools. Get that set up. Then you got your open house forms, your text codes. I would just make a couple couple of those really quick. Um, really easy to use. First up, questionnaires. You customize your questions however you want. This is kind of how I do it. I want to, you know, what's your name? What's your email, phone number? What's your home address? Um, and then I say, hey, what are you? So you are a buyer, seller. Uh, curious neighbor, not selling. A buyer and a seller, a home inspector, a realtor. Like I want to know who they are. And then are you working with a realtor? Yes or no? Like I want to know these things because I'm going to do some more advanced automation with them and I want to know who they are. Now, some really cool things about this tool are when you create a new open house, you can click add new and you can see all your listings right here. Let's just say I want to select one of my listings. And of course you can um, add other people's listings too. So if you don't have one of your own listings, you can add your own. Uh, you could send like welcome emails, welcome texts, uh, register as a team lead. I'm going to turn all this stuff off because I don't care about this stuff as much. Uh, select questionnaire. Uh, this is our main open house one. And then we're going to, I'm not going to share this with, one with anyone. Click create. And I can click view and it's going to show me my open house. Of course, I already showed this before. They can scan this code and check in or they can fill out that form right here. Pretty cool stuff. We have a reporting tool right here. Uh, take a look at this if you want to kind of like see what's going on with your your reporting, see like your email open rates, uh, lead sources, what you're closing. Uh, you can see all your email accountability, uh, all your agent stuff, um, performance by agent, your website traffic. Uh, it's going to take a second to load. Uh, you see like your busiest times of day, like Wednesday at 1 p.m. For some reason, I seem to get the most traffic to my website. You can see where it's coming from, organic, if it's paid, whatever. You have our activity monitor, really cool tool uh, where you can see, hey, what kind of activity is everyone taking on my website? Now we have our timeline tool where you can just see everything that's been going on the last few hours. Lots of people have been opening emails, going to my website, viewing properties. Uh, I can see certain leads here that have looked at a lot of properties. So like a guy right here, uh, he's checked out 28 listings and saved two of them. And if I want to, you know what, maybe I want to follow up with him. You know, he's seen a lot of, he's looked at a lot of stuff recently. Um, again, right here, here's some properties that this guy was looking at. 
Uh, I know you can't see his name because I had to blur it out. Sorry about that. Um, lots of lots of really cool stuff. Now let's move on to the website. Um, when setting up your website, first things first is I think you should keep it simple. Less is more. Don't get too crazy with it. Don't overcomplicate it and uh, keep it SEO friendly. Watch some basic videos on how to set up your SEO. It's not that complicated. I know it could seem like this big, crazy, scary thing. It's really not. Keep it simple. Uh, I generate a good amount of leads, not a ton, but like at least about a dozen leads a month just for my website net completely passively organically. I don't like do any auto posting. Well, I mean, I do some auto posting, but like it's all organic from search. And the way this works, the way I set this up is a couple different ways. First up, uh, before we dive into anything, uh, if we click on our editor, uh, you can customize anything on your website. Keep it simple, don't add a lot. Uh, yeah, just less is more, and that's all you really need to know. Uh, you have your blocks here. Blocks are basically everything, everything. So like here's all my agent information, here's like banners, here's like my calendar link. Remember that cool calendar link that you can embed in your website so people can schedule on a, a time with you. You got your blogs, you got custom calculators, you got call to actions, you got like different content you can create. There's a ton of stuff. You got galleries, guides, um, you have like property search tools. You can like really customize these search tools. You could do a ton of stuff. You could do uh, videos, you could do market trends. It, it honestly, it's just, it's a ton. You can add your social media feeds, so like your Instagram or Facebook feeds, uh, vendors, like partners, um, market snapshots. You can add like live videos, like the list goes on. Um, of course you have your filters tool if you wanna like filter out different listings and show up in different orders. I prioritize my city first, to show up first. Uh, I don't know why it's not loading, that's okay. Uh oh, just load, sorry. <laughs> right as I clicked away, it loads. Um, make your blogs. I really recommend you make your own blogs. Make a bunch of them, post them. Uh, spend some time. Spend some time learning how to make blogs correctly. They're a great way to generate real estate business. Now you can hire a ghostwriter. Again, they just have to be custom and unique to your your area. I really recommend making blogs on like what it's like living in your city, uh, guides to your city, neighborhood guides, neighborhood tours, uh, similar to like the uh, YouTube content strategy, but for blogs. And if you make YouTube videos, turn those into blogs, hire someone, hire a VA, hire someone on Fiverr or, or Upwork and, and have them turn your blogs into videos. A great way to get a lot more business and uh, traffic to your website. Now for the lead registration, this is gonna help you capture the most leads. It's not just turning on the pop-up, you do want the pop-up registration, but you want to do these custom settings exactly, okay? So follow me step-by-step. Step. You're gonna click on custom settings and you're gonna to go to select pages, okay? And you're gonna click on, you're gonna click on property detail page only, okay? Now, I think I have it on this page, but I wanted to turn it off. I just keep forgetting to. Um, property details page. So when they look at a property, five properties, not when they look at blogs, not when they look at solds, not when they look at videos or agent information or calculators or market trends or any of that stuff, only when they look at five houses. And again, we're gonna click five. So after number of page views, it's gonna be five. Uh, triggers based up on page views. Um, they're gonna, it's gonna pop up and we're gonna give them the option to turn it off so they can close it if they want. This I found generates me more leads because it doesn't force them to sign up. It just offers them, hey, make a free account. You're gonna see houses before they're on Zillow. And it allows them to stay on the website and keep searching for homes, which is really good for your SEO and building up your search engine optimization because it shows Google people like to spend a lot of time on your website. Now, oftentimes what happens when you force people to sign up right away, what they do is they see that they have to sign up, they can't click away and they bounce and they get off the website. And then Google sees that and they punish you. They punish you badly, okay? They do not like that. So so this is what I hate to do. They look at five houses. It offers them to let them create an account. Some of them do, um, some of them don't. And I've been actually getting a lot more leads since I've done it this way. So highly recommend you do it this way. Of course, you got your pop-up questions. You could do whatever you want. This is how I do it. This is how I set them up. Uh, if you want a more in-depth on all the questions and registration info that I do, um, again, I got that free course down below that you can check out. Uh, really good stuff there. Chat box, I like to use the AI assistant to just be my chat form in, in Capture Box, but of course you can do a manual one or a lead form, whatever you want. It's really up to you. Now, real quick, let's touch on 
featured areas, I really recommend you setting up your neighborhoods. So these are gonna be like your neighborhood profiles and the way these work, if I were to pull them up on my website, uh, Chime lets you set up these neighborhoods for you on your, um, your website. And this is a great way to build up your SEO. So I really recommend you do do this if you get the chance. It's just gonna be a ton of information about all the, all the different neighborhoods, areas, cities in your market, ton of demographic uh, information, all sorts of stuff you can see here. Uh, really good stuff, a good way to get free leads. I've actually gotten a lot of leads from this. Again, you could track that from inside of your CRM to see where leads are coming from. Really recommend checking it out. Now, before this video is over, let's go ahead and dive deep into our settings and best practice for setting up your settings inside of the Chime CRM. Now, I'm gonna go really in depth into this in my uh, Chime course. So if you wanna check that out, you definitely can. You don't have to by any means. Um, it is There is a free course that you can check out. Uh, I do have a ton of templates and like all my follow-up campaigns, exact step-by-step -step instructions on how I set up my Chime CRM to literally never follow up again. Uh, would we'll definitely check it out. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just dive into our settings here to kind of give you a good idea on what you should do. Now, first up, you're gonna wanna create your profile, update your photo, uh, add your name, your phone number, email, your license number, uh, add any MLSs you're a part of. I'm just part of one. I know some of you might be part of several. Uh, your email signature, if you want to do a really cool HTML email signature, um, I use a tool called Wise Stamp to make my email signatures. HubSpot has a free tool you can use as well. Um, it's not quite as good, but actually it's pretty good. Um, but when you, when you import like an HTML style email, you're going to want to click on this button right here, paste all that code in there, and then click done. And then click save, and bada boom, bada bing, you have your email. And if you want to apply this to all your emails, so like the signature to all your emails to make consistent, and this would be like your listing alerts, your property alerts, your home value reports, as well as your automated emails um, or your automated like drip campaigns, your follow-up campaigns, your smart plans. You can, I leave it just for my smart plans, uh, not for my automated stuff, because I want people to know that there's a difference between my automated emails and my personal, they're not really personal emails, but emails that might look personal, so I turn this off. Also, another quick little hack I wanna show you right here if I click on edit, is I add a bunch of spaces and then I add a period right here at the bottom. And the reason I do that is this this is how I hide the unsubscribe button, okay? It's a really great way to hide it uh, down below at the bottom of the email so they don't see it, so they actually think my personal email, it's supposed to be personal. Hey, Tommy here, checking in, seeing how you're doing. Want to see any houses? It looks more personal. It doesn't look as automated, uh, but the add on subscribe button is still there to remain legal. So that's just one little hack that I do. Definitely recommend you check that out. Um, you got your notifications, your preferences, your working hours, uh, lots of stuff here. You can add additional agents. You can add like lenders. If you have like multiple lenders, you have your vendor partners. Um, so these are be like your transaction, any people you work with for like transaction stuff. Uh, so like my, my inspector, my photographer, videographer, people like that. If you're on a team, you have all your lead routing rules. There's a ton of like, you can go really deep into this. I'm not going to go into it because um, it's not going to apply to most of you, but you can really dive into how you want to like route all your rules for like your lenders, your assistants, your ISA, any of your agents. Um, you can go deep into how you want leads to go certain in certain places. Uh, your property alerts, again, same tool we had under campaigns. You have it right here. You have your tags and sources. You can add all your tags or your sources. Custom fields. This is for like inside of the leads profile, part of smart plan stuff. Really good stuff here. Integrations. Going to integrate with all your additional software like Zapier, MailChimp, your Google integration. So if you're doing like all your email stuff, this is where you're going to go to like integrate your emails. So I use Google. So you can use Google. Um, of course, you can use Outlook or or any other uh IMAP or STMPT type of stuff, Office 360. You can also integrate with like SkySlope, CloudCMA, BombBomb, Slide Broadcast, um, Calendly. These are all the other email uh, services that I uh, subscribe to. You have your lead capture. So of course, add all your leads, you know, Facebook, Realtor.com, Zillow, uh, really good stuff here. You have your AI assistant. I use the AI, really powerful tool. But what I do here is I disable call forwarding. I also rename AI, the AI to Amy. I just, I don't know, I liked it. I thought it was a good idea. I do welcome messages on the website because I want to I want to make sure I'm getting um, those any website visitors. Also really important if you're using the AI, turn on long-term follow-up, make sure that is on. Uh, live chat for website enabled. And then if you want to change her image, uh, you can. Uh, I just got someone, I got, I got this photo off unsplash.com. 
um, free photo website. And then I have my active text hours. So she only will text people between 7 a.m. and uh, 11 p.m. I don't want her texting people at three in the morning. I just don't think it works very well. And then I have it on for all lead sources, all lead types, except renters. I just don't want to deal with renters. So I make sure it's off for renters. And then I have it on for every single pipeline, except appointment set, active clients under contract and closed. I don't want the CR, I don't want the AI following up with anyone in these pipelines. Uh, I just don't need her to. I don't have her qualify new leads. If I do have her qualify new leads, I will trigger it manually with a smart plan. I got some personal reasons for that. Uh, the exception is sellers all actually will have um, a qualify new seller leads. And then, um, yeah, I leave all these other settings on. Now, when you're importing your leads, real quick here, uh, I recommend you import your leads and then I re recommend you import them into a group. So when you make them, I would create a custom group under people here and just say like name it for whatever you want. It's lead import, whatever. And then from that group, I would then start assigning them different smart plans. Either either add your leads where you need to inside of this pipeline, you know, the new lead, nurture, cold, warm, wherever you think you need to add them. And if you don't know where you need to add them, I would just put them all like in like a nurture. So this is the, the nurture pipeline is kind of my catch all for, I don't really know what to do with you. You're not looking to buy or sell right now. So I'm just gonna leave you in here for long-term nurture. That's what I do. Um, and of course I have some more dynamic smart plans. So like if they like are in the nurture pipeline and they uh, looked at like three listings on my website, I might move them from the nurture pipeline to a hot pipeline to follow up with them because um, I think they're probably a hot lead now. So that's one thing you can, do, you can do. We have our transaction checklist. So I make all these different transactional checklists. So like my purchase, my listings, and these are basically less for my virtual assistant as well as me to just go through and just follow all these forms. So all these processes on like, a, like a, when I, when I get a house under contract, when I get a new listing, like here's my to-do list on everything. You have different fields, you have different roles for like your buyers, your sellers, your, your uh, BA, stagers, like all your different partners that you work with. You have your templates, your email templates, your smart plan templates. Again, you can access them here as well as under campaigns. Um, call templates, if you use a lot of the call templates, you got a really cool call feature. You have like your dial pad, you can see all like call history. Uh, all sorts of stuff like that. You have your text templates, and then of course you have your dialers and a company phone number. If you wanna add a company phone number, you can. You can just add your own dialer. Now here's a quick recommendation for you on the texting package. Uh, I recommend you just go with the basic dialer and the basic texting. I think it's 500 minutes. Uh, it's like $15 or $10. You get 100 text messages a day. So the way Chime works, it's text per day. Uh, I find that I don't need to ever text more than 100 people a day. Now I get 500, you'll probably see I have 500 texts a day here. That's because I get them for free when I'm working at Real Broker. Real Broker gives me the Chime CRM for free. So if you think about joining Real Broker, let me know. Uh, actually, sorry, it's not for free. It's 25 bucks a month, but I do get 500 texts a day. I do get the Chime, Chime AI, the big, the you know, the bigger package. I get a bunch of free stuff, the CMA tool, a bunch of really cool stuff. Really like it, but uh, for most people, before I joined Real Broker, I think the text, just the 100 texts a day was plenty for me. If I was sending out more than 100 texts a day, I could have been doing other better things with my time. Um, it's just, if you're sending out more than 100 texts, too many people are gonna be responding to you and it's gonna get confusing. Um, for setting up your phone number, make sure you have your personal phone number. Now, this you can't see it because this is blurred out here, um, but this is my personal cell phone number that I want my phone to go to. Uh, I do enable call recording because I want to call, I want to record all my calls. You know, if you live in a state where you have to disclose that, make sure you do. Otherwise you've got to turn this off. Um, I want them to display my chime number. So this is my chime number. Um, and same with my uh, texting ID, I can't change that. But like, if I want, you can have it be your cell phone number, but I personally prefer to have it be my chime serum number just for consistency sake. Uh, and this is the number you have to type in to bridge the bridge that gap. This is my virtual number. I try to collect uh, virtual numbers that are similar to my area. So just be mindful of that. Look for numbers that maybe don't look as spammy, that are also easy to type in and have like certain patterns, so like two different numbers, consecutive numbers in a row, things like that. If you want to do call, call forwarding to like a, another team member or an outside number, you can definitely add additional phone numbers and it will forward any phone calls you get, like say after like 10 seconds you don't answer, it's going to auto forward any incoming calls to a team member. Really cool stuff, especially if you're like on vacation and you don't wanna get any phone calls, maybe you wanna send it to an assistant or another agent you're working with, really cool stuff. 
And lastly, before we are done with this video, we've got to talk about these buttons right here. We got our search tool. So if you want to search any lead at any time, you definitely can. Uh, we also have our inbox right here. Now this inbox is basically all of our texts and emails, conversations. You can see all of our phone calls, basically all of our inbound activity, all of our conversations you can see there. You can also see our text conversations right here on the right hand side, as well as the AI conversations. Um, we also have all of our opportunities. So again, remember that activity monitor we had under here under reporting. Uh, you can see all the different leads activities right here. You're gonna see some of that stuff right here. Opportunities are basically any leads that the CRM or Chime thinks that, hey, you should probably follow up with these people. They're probably really hot and really interested. Definitely wanna check those out. Additionally, here under next to opportunities, we have notifications. Now we got different types of notifications. Um, if you're on a team, you have your at me, so like, People on your team can like, hey, by the way, at so-and-so, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Different communications like missed calls, text messages, anything like that, transaction stuff, any sort of tasks that you have to do for the day. You have your AI stuff that you got to do. And then, of course, you have um, your, no your uh, settings here where you can turn what notifications you want to see on and which ones you don't want to see. Lots of really cool stuff here. Definitely recommend getting that set up however you want. Uh, this is how I set up my notifications, but you can really do whatever you want. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this video was helpful to you, that you learned something uh, and that you're able to set up your Chime CRM to basically just automate whatever you want. Uh, again, I use it to automate a ton of my real estate business like you would not believe it. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to message me down below. Uh, leave, a, leave a comment. I do respond to um, as many comments as I possibly can, which is almost all of them, about 90% of them. So if you have a question, let me know. Uh, I do have a free course that you can get and sign up and learn how to go even deeper inside of the Chime CRM. So make sure you check that out. Uh, and if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can definitely schedule a call and let's chat. We'll talk about the CRM and uh, I can help you get set up on that and uh, anything like that. With that said, my name is Tommy Mutchler, your lazy agent, and I will see you in the next one.